Good morning. So it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, this is my first web summit, so I'm, I'm truly excited to see what we actually have going on here. I'm going to talk to you a great deal of today about artificial intelligence, but just as the slide outlines, I want to begin to actually understand some of the myths, the misunderstandings, and also the practical reality of artificial intelligence. And you may ask yourself, why Cisco? Why are we looking at this? So let's start with a few data points just to help you understand. Six times the number of Google traffic is applied on Cisco every single day. 600 billion emails originate on Cisco every single day. 20 billion security breaches are stopped every single day. Two-thirds of the world's network traffic. So all of these things that we're looking at are material concerns, but they're also material insight. So when we think about artificial intelligence, I think one of the things that is most commonly accepted is that how it is applied in our daily lives. We see it, we like it, we use it, but whenever we come into the business side of things, we as humans have this tendency to begin to fear the applicable elements of artificial intelligence. And I think a great deal of that is because it's misunderstood. A great deal of that is because we apply Hollywood-based myths towards the level of artificial intelligence. And I think that that's what we have to begin to address when we think about this. So when you think about a myth, people think artificial intelligence is this distant technology. To help apply a little bit of understanding on that is Silicon Valley is about 35 miles long, yet we invest $50 billion a year in innovation. That does not include $6.3 billion that Cisco invests every single year in innovation. That is just venture capital for startup funding. Half of that is aimed at artificial intelligence and augmented reality. It is not a distant technology, it's actually thriving. So when you think about those 10 million cars that I'm highlighting here, understand that there is a direct impact upon the automotive industry. Artificial intelligence is actually cre is the creation behind autonomous driving. By 2020, that is the estimate of 10 million, yet the number that we're on today will surpass that. If you don't recognize that digital disruption is a reality, we ask over 1,600 CEOs on an annual basis, do you feel it? And you see on the slide what they're talking about is, yes, the pace at which artificial intelligence and digital disruption is actually happening is unlike any end of, uh, industrial revolution that they've ever encountered before. In three years, what they're saying is, is I have a chance to lose as much as 40% to 50% of my business. Because the pace at which is happening, digital disruption is not a technical strategy, it is a business strategy. This has a direct correlation to the speed at which computing is happening. And if you look at the right-hand side of the slide, what it shows you is it is not taking its attention off of a single industry. Artificial intelligence and digital disruption is happening to every single industry on a global basis. And it's critical that we actually understand it. Last year, you talked a great deal about cybersecurity. But when you look at a common misunderstanding of artificial intelligence, is people fundamentally begin to think that it's a unique technology. You need to understand that artificial intelligence, when it is not applied directly to security, directly within the throat of IoT, you're presenting an inherent risk. Keep in mind, I said, we stop 20 billion security breaches per day. Today, cybersecurity industry is nearly a trillion dollar tax-free industry, growing to be a three trillion dollar a year business. 20 billion per day. Artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and Internet of Things are commonly misunderstood and thought to be bespoke technologies. They must be highly integrated when you think about how you're going to deploy them. 
If you don't believe it, go back to where I started. The autonomous driving car is first and foremost the complete assemblance of an IoT and an artificial intelligent security program. The code, the development, the self-learning, the utilization of the smart grid tied to public Wi-Fi, it is all these points of technology that are literally coming together to learn. But yet we as humans tend to look at the artificial, the autonomous driving car and marvel at just the fact that it will drive itself. The people building it are looking at it as a technical solution. The software developers are tying together these three technologies all into one to make something that we as consumers, we as a business will fundamentally be able to leverage. But they are not bespoke. So, if you look at another myth, is it a distant future? Is it narrow in its applicability? Is it anchored just to data? Is artificial intelligence really there? It has wide application today. It is thriving today. $30 billion is invested in the development of artificial intelligence solutions today. When you look at cybersecurity, there is an average number of 72 vendors in every single company. 72 security vendors in every single company. Those 72 tend to be very disparate technologies which create the $1 trillion cybersecurity industry. A common mistake that people are making with artificial intelligence is they're breaking it apart and thinking about it as an application versus a common artificial intelligence strategy. If you don't look at this as holistically, you fundamentally are going to inherently seed cybersecurity risk into your business. Artificial intelligence must be coupled with security. $30 billion per year is what's being invested to actually tie those things together. It's on pace to be a $1 trillion business. We, as one company, two-thirds of the world's network traffic crosses Cisco at 1.5 million connected devices per day. 1.5. We track, right now, to a connected ecosystem by 2020 of over 50 billion devices. That's 50 billion distinct devices that are communicating in sub one thousandths of a second. When you think about autonomous driving cars, they're going to decide out at the edge in sub one thousandths of a second. But first and foremost, they are a comprehensive IoT, artificial intelligence, and security because you're sitting in it. It is an aggregated solution, but it is a trillion dollar business. A lot of people, when they start to think about, is AI alive and well, they fundamentally look past the thing that you're carrying today is listening to every single word that you're, that you're sharing. If you've ever leveraged Google Home, Alexa, it's listening to every single word that you're talking about. Your phone is recording every single word that we're sitting here talking about. It just simply is tied to artificial intelligence telling it when it should trigger and when it should wake up. But yet it hears every single word. It's doing that because it's running against an algorithm that's going to constantly apply intelligence because by 2030, we believe that we'll be able to tie your cognitive brain waves to the cloud to help you analyze and make decisions much, much faster. That is a constant refinement strategy of how we listen and how we apply all these disparate data sets, but we have to listen and collect all these data elements. $30 billion a year is invested to continue to drive those innovations. But yet, this goes back to my first slide. In our consumer life, we love it. But the real question is, is it applied today in our actual professional lives? And the answer is, it's out there. But more times than not, we fundamentally look past it. We don't recognize that AI is already alive in almost every single industry today. 
Companies have begun to adopt and deploy artificial intelligence in very meaningful ways. If you look at manufacturing, manufacturing adopts 10% more robotics every single year on a global basis, but the artificial intelligence that actually governs it is not just the software code, it's the human interaction with robotics. We're teaching the robotics to adapt, and every year we add 10% more on a global basis. We're constantly moving people into the workforce, but we're teaching the robots at the same time. It is underpinning of artificial intelligence. Healthcare. The replacement of organs is far more effective today because if you do a heart transplant, what people are doing is they're fundamentally creating a, a duplicate view of the heart. They can see it in four dimensions. They can spin it around. They, do, they can understand it. for as little as $20,000, children are having heart transplants at a higher success rate because they fundamentally can see all avenues associated with it. Tied back to robotics, the doctors are sitting at machines through robotics looking at 4D images associated with the transplants of what they're applying. We invest in hospitals constantly because this is the future of connected-based medicine, is how far can we actually see and refine the science associated with medicine. If I take it a step further, and you think about robotics, farming and molecular science has been leveraging deep-based learning. Every single plant, 10,000 images. 10,000 images per plant literally dissecting, does it need water? Does it need nutrients? Does it have bacteria? And they treat it one by one. The production environment is growing, but the robot looks nothing like any farm equipment that you probably have seen before. It's run diagnostically far, far away. If you look at another example in mining, autonomous driving quarry equipment is saving lives, but yet the productivity is 4x. So you think about large dump truck, the people are driving Caterpillar dump trucks sit 1,100 miles away. It's artificial based intelligence. If I take it one more, retinopathy. Look, if you're like me, you're probably starting to need eyeglasses. The deep based learning to actually begin to analyze from one person to the next to fundamentally begin to refine the science associated with predictive care of the eyes is moving forward light years. Every two years, the degree by which they can begin to predict and improve eye care is doubling. That's a very positive thing for each and every one of us. But if I take this and I begin to think about where is it going, AlphaGo, Go is a 3,000 year old Chinese game. Many of you may not have played it, but if I help you understand the magnitude of how challenging this game is, there's more moves in this one game than there are atoms in the universe. It's very, very complex. Alpha Go is an algorithm that was created out of unstructured data. The machine that you see here literally began to play unstructured moves. It didn't have data that was actually put into it. It literally began to apply moves to see where it made mistakes. Year by year, in four days, it played 19.5 million times. And what it began to identify is through mistake, it became self-taught. So it played the version from one year, pre, one year prior and beat it 100 times to zero. 100 times to zero. Then it got its ability to compete from 40 days down to three days and still beat it 100 times to zero. It took unstructured data and began to apply it to the compute speed to learn and apply it. And why this is critical for us is because when you think about artificial intelligence, it is moving towards self-taught because the compute speed is actually there. The brain power is there by which we're putting these things in motion. 
but it's all an enormous opportunity to solve some of the world's most catastrophic problems. Energy consumption, water utilization, population. Nothing's being applied in a manner that actually isn't against the most meaningful things that actually will impact the United, the United Nations of the world coming together, fundamentally tackling some of these things. That's where we're investing this time. But if you begin to apply it a little bit step further, one of the things that you will begin to identify is artificial intelligence in the next three years is going to greatly accelerate mass personalization. Each and every one of us will literally begin to have that effect of where you're, you think about the consumer elements being highly tailored to you. Very, very customized. All these technologies coming together. Real-time customization. Clothing, retail, cars. If you want to see something that where this is happening, the, the banks of the future and ATMs and branches are already leveraging augmented reality where you come in and you talk, there is not a person. But you interact as though it's fully there. All of your capabilities are there. The, the car dealership of the future has nothing in it. You're simply interacting all from your house. So if I was to look at this and I bring it back to us, what is it, some things that you begin to do? Most people fundamentally view this all as a technical solution, not as a business solution first and foremost. The companies, the automotive companies that are used as a reference, Apple, Google, the others, they don't start from a technical element, they start from what is it that is the business element. Tell me what the technology will do, but help me understand the business element that I'm after. Don't overthink it. Start with the near-term things that you can begin to automate. Refine. Aggregate many disparate sources of data and start to automate those processes and refine them. Don't solve for world hunger. Get it started. But execute, 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 just like in the AlphaGo Zero. Played it many, many times, helping it learn and refine from how it was going to do it. So I'll leave you with something that I started with. We as consumers love the notion of artificial intelligence. In the business world, we fundamentally begin to fear it. Technology is not going to slow down. It's going to do nothing but accelerate. But if we don't control how we're going to leverage technology, it will become a problem. But it's not meant to replace humans. It is not meant to be a competitive threat to humans. It is meant to actually do exactly what this quote says, enhance human capabilities. But when you look at that, and my role, and how I look at Cisco's role is, if we don't all fundamentally begin to act upon reimagining work and reimagining the value, we'll miss what artificial intelligence and all of these technical advances will mean to us. But this is your challenge, is to act today, to reimagine work, to reimagine the value, but don't make the mistakes that I've highlighted here. Understand that myth is reality. It's here today. It's not a bespoke technology. It is highly integrated into how you're going to redefine work. And with that, I'd like to thank you, and I hope that you have a wonderful web summit.